Welcome to Do It in Durham 2021. Now in its ninth year, Do It in Durham is an event series that takes place during Global Entrepreneurship Week. It is Durham Region's own forum to celebrate, inspire, and support entrepreneurship. Stay tuned as we bring on our presenter. Good day and welcome. Mm -hmm. Do It in Durham takes place during Global Entrepreneurship Week and is Durham Region's own forum to celebrate, inspire, and support entrepreneurs like you. 2021 is our ninth year. Our theme this year is riding the waves. Just like in surfing, businesses need to be able to ride the waves, fight the sharks, the sharks and find the perfect wave. Events recorded during this week will be edited and uploaded in the coming weeks. We invite you to subscribe to our BACD YouTube channel for free so you may receive notifications when they are loaded. I will put the link in the chat box chat box shortly. The Do It in Durham event series is a collaboration of organizations and resources for businesses in Durham region. It is in partnership with business owners and entrepreneurs sharing their expertise. This year, we have some amazing sponsors. We have them every year, but this year we would love to recognize our sponsors and we'll highlight them near the end. And I just want to invite everyone who's not aware, but 1855 Whitby is offering a drop-in option for professionals. So if this is something that's of interest, there is an offer on the table as well, which will be shared. Uh, it's for a week. And what else do I want to share with you? Well, to be honest, that we have the most amazing Antoinette in the house who's going to share about Canva and everything to do with the amazing Canva. So we're excited. Antoinette, all yours. All right. Thank you very much, Patrice. Um, so welcome, everyone. My name is Antoinette Burrell, and I do work closely. I'm fortunate to work closely with the team at BACD, including Patrice. And uh, I think this is actually my third year in a row doing um, a presentation for Duke and Durham Week. So very exciting to be back. And um, I just want to give you a little bit of background. Uh, well, Patrice already gave us some background on what's on my screen, and that is that we are in our ninth year of the uh, Do It in Durham um, initiative for Global Entrepreneurship Week. And uh, this is me. I know it doesn't look like me. I just had my hair done the other uh, yesterday, actually. <laughs> so I've got to update my profile picture. Sorry, everyone. But this is me. Uh, my name is Antoinette, and I'm the founder of Morel Creative. And today I am going to share a session with you called Creating Clickworthy Social Media Graphics with Canva. Um, I think somebody may have their microphone on. I don't know if we're able to mute anyone or... I cannot see who it's it's just showing in the background everybody's muted so I'm not everybody's oh. muted so I'm not sure where or how oh I've just muted everyone I think someone was unmuted but I've muted everyone and then you came back so that's great just be sure to keep your mics muted everyone unless you have a question I totally don't mind if you jump in right in the middle and um and ask me anything to uh to give some clarity. But aside from that, I do believe Patrice will be keeping an eye on the, the chat. And I, I thank you in advance, Patrice, so that if anyone has a burning question, you know, just jump right in. So today's session is going to be a, a real, it, it's going to be a session where you're going to learn some new skills. I'm going to teach you how to actually use Canva to create some really um, captivating social media graphics. So Canva is a, a tool that is free to use if you don't have Canva. Let me just switch over to my other screen here. If you do not have Canva or you have never used Canva before, can you just pop it right into the chat here? Um, just tell me if you are brand new to Canva. Let's see, never used it before. Okay, we've got one person who's never used it before. I think a lot of people have had a little bit of experience with Canva, but you don't have to have any experience because it's very easy to learn. And I'm gonna show you some of the quick tips today. Um, if it's your first time and you don't have a Canva account, all that you need to do is go to www.canva.com. All you need to sign up for a free account is your email address. They do not need your, um, your credit card or anything like that. There are plenty of tools that you can use free of charge on Canva. I personally have the paid account. Um, but I went for many years without using the paid account. It's about $12 a month and it's worth every penny. So uh, keep that in mind. But as I go through the session, I'll try to point out wherever possible which 
uh, tools and options are available um, paid versus uh, with the free account. So I'll, I'll try to sort of moderate that a little bit. Now, for this session, what I'm going to show you is a series of different examples of how to build up some really captivating uh, social media graphics. And I'm gonna teach you some design principles as well. Now, don't be intimidated when I say design. Um, I myself am not a graphic designer, I'm a presentation designer. So I design things like PowerPoint slides, training guides, info packages, infographics. I design annual reports, resumes, all of that good stuff and I am not a graphic designer. So I reveal that to you because number one, I'm always transparent with my clients. And number two, I wanna let you know that if I can learn this and I'm not a graphic designer, you can learn it too. So let's give it a go and uh, we can get right into it. So now just a quick browse around your screen. On the left-hand side, you have some folders and so forth where you can see you know, all your designs or click on this button to go to the home screen where you can see a series of different templates that you can use. Across the top, you also have some menus. For example, if you want to find a particular template, you can go and click. For example, if you're looking for uh, Instagram posts or Facebook posts, or you can even create a logo or presentation or a flyer, all kinds of goodies here with Canva. You can also go over to the right-hand side and see a button that says create a design. So you can type exactly what you're looking for. So maybe if you were trying to um, create uh, an invitation, maybe an invitation to an event or an online event, as soon as you tar start typing invitation, it gives you some potential sizes here, whether it's in inches or centimeters, there are different units of measurement that you can use. And you can also choose to do this, custom size. You have this button here, and it's also down here with the plus sign. Now, sometimes you'll be creating um, a graphic that's an unusual size. Maybe it's something that you want to fit into a certain space in your newsletter, or you're creating a graphic that's going to be added to an email or um, on your website. So you can definitely create a custom size. So that's the first thing that you want to sort out. What size is it that you want or for what type of social media graphic? So I'm happy to say that Canva is really great about social media. You've got a category right here under templates, depending on what type of graphic you want to create, it's sized for you perfectly. Now here's a tip as well. If you're not sure about what size you need, all you can, all you need to do is go to Google and search, you know, what are the current social media graphic sizes for whatever, Twitter or whatever. And you can always choose a custom size here. Okay, so without any further delay, let's get right into creating some designs. So I'm going to start here through templates, and I'm going to start by creating an Instagram post. When I click on that, it gives me the option to create a blank Instagram post and then build it from the top, right, or build it from nothing, from a blank page, or I can use one of these templates. So if I see one that looks good, let's see, I'm going to choose... Um, how about this one right here, daily motivation. And it just pops up saying, hey, okay, here's what you have. You've got it fully customizable. Here's a blue button or purple button, customize this template. So what it provides to me is the right sizing because if I go up to the top and I click file, it shows me the exact size of this particular type of social media graphic. Uh, if I am in a paid account, I can click resize and change the size, and then the resize button will pop up here. So it will take the same project and just change the size. Um, if you are in the free account, you would have to choose copy and resize. So it will give you an extra copy and you can, you know, have two different sizes depending on what your needs are. And across the top as well, I want you to see that there's a home button. If you want to go back to the main screen, so essentially back here, that is where the home button will take you. And you will always be able to see projects that you've done recently because there's a section here that says your designs. And you have two tabs at the top now, one for the home and one for the project you're working in. So what I'm saying is you can basically never lose your spot. You can never lose your stuff. Canva auto saves 
every two or three seconds. And then I also want to show you that there is a title for your presentation or your, your group of different graphics. So you can give this any title you want. So I'm going to say this is Antoinette's um, posts for December. Okay. I have the ability to have several different posts. And then once I create them all, then I can um, post them whenever I like or schedule them. Hi, Patrice. Hi, you said to interject if there was a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. So one yes. of the questions that came up is what if I want to create a post for multiple platforms, such as Insta, Facebook, et cetera, what template do I use? So it's not a good idea to use one size for multiple platforms. It's, it's going to cut off pieces of it. It's not going to work out so well. Um, what I would recommend is you can start one. Let's say I, I start this one as an Instagram size, and then I can click resize, and then I can make the next one. Uh, maybe I can go here and let's see if I can look for uh, Facebook here. I can do Facebook post and copy and resize. Now, what it's going to do, if you look up to the top here, it's going to keep the original square size here for Instagram. I'm going to copy the content. You see, it's the same content, but now it is resized for a Facebook post. So you'll have to download two groupings of graphics and post them separately. It's never a good idea to use one standard size for all platforms. It, it doesn't fit into the, the structure very well. So I hope that answers your question. All right, I think we're good for now. So let's just have a quick look around at how you can modify a template. And then I'm going to start to teach you how to create your own from scratch, because sometimes you'll be looking through the templates here on the left hand side and you might see one that you like or you might not see one that you like. Right. So let's say, for example, I really love this one. I can continue to um, customize it. So stay inspired, never stop creating. Maybe I have a different quote, you know. Um, get your hustle. Give up. OK, so I can customize any template with the, the words I like. If I want to add another page, maybe I want to see another template, it'll give me another page. Um, in this case, it's given me a blue background because it's copying the previous one. I can click on the page, press delete, and then it's a white background. So then I can go and I can find a different template and I can just kind of play around and go back and forth until I get what I like. Um, quick note about finding templates that will be here on your left hand side in the template section. We're going to go through all these other menus a little bit later, but for now I wanted to show you just how to customize your text. And another way that you can customize your text is by highlighting the text or selecting it, going and finding any other type of font. If there is a font style that you like, but you know, you're not really sure the name of the font, you can click in the search bar for the fonts and you can type the style. So if I want a font that is more like a script, I can type script. And now it gives me all the fonts that are described as a script font. So I get a lot of options here, but I don't have to go through all, I don't know how many fonts there are, hundreds really, it's, there's so many fonts. But this gives me, allows me to narrow it down and find ones that are kind of in the style that I'm looking for, okay? Another thing about fonts is you notice here as I scroll down, some of these fonts have a crown at the end and some of them do not. So the ones where you see a crown, it means those fonts are really only available in the paid account of Canva. The ones without a crown um, are available whether you're in paid or in the free account. So that's one thing to look out for. You are able to upload a font, um, which we may get to a bit later if we have time. But for now, let's just focus on just some basic customizations. So I have my text here. I showed you how to change the font or where to find the fonts. You also have size options for changing the size of your font. You can also change the text color of your font. Oops, yellow on yellow will not work. <laughs> okay. And Here's another thing that you can do. You can actually use the circles on the corners to drag towards the middle to make everything smaller or drag away from the middle to make everything bigger. And that works for fonts and also images. And some other basics that you may be familiar with, the B for bold, italics, underline, uppercase, lowercase. 
You can change the alignment, center, left, right. You can add bullets. And here's an interesting one that you don't see all the time, the spacing. So what you can do is you can change the spacing between letters. Now watch the letters here. As I click and drag, these letters will go further apart. Are you seeing the letters are getting more space in between? And now as I drag to the left, they're getting closer together. Another cool option, line spacing. Drag to the right and you'll get extra space between lines. Drag to the left and there is less space in between lines. Right, so just a few cool things that you can do with text. Now, I also want to show you how you can start to create your own stuff from scratch. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to the home tab up here, or we could even take a shortcut on the top bar here. And let's start again. So I'm going to grab another template for Instagram. This time I'm going to say create a blank post on Instagram. And I'm going to say Antoinette. Antoinette's new December posts. We'll download them later. So let's talk about how we can make things look really good with some nice graphics, whether that's uh, photos or illustrations or any other little elements that we use to make things look nice. So if I wanted to have a really dramatic look, I can add a photo to the background. And where I find the photos is over here in the elements section. So in elements, I can type what I'm looking for. I can say I'm looking for, um, let's say, uh, a picture of the woods. And now I get a lot of results for woods, but I can break it down into photos or graphics. There are also videos that are native to, um, to Canva or you can also bring in your own, which I will show you later. And you can ask, also add audio. So that's if you wanna do like an Instagram story or something, you can certainly do that. But photos, so here I have some photos of the woods and I see everything looks pretty much like it's, it's green or some photos have like a fall theme. Well, if I want more specific results, I have to treat this search bar like it's Google. So what do you do when you're in Google and you're trying to search for something and you can't find it? you change the way you, you do the search. You use different words or different terminology. So instead of woods, I can say woods, I can say winter woods. Let's see if I can get some winter graphics here. Much different, right? You get everything that looks like it's got a winter theme. Lots of snow, right? Lots of trees without the leaves and so forth. So this is how you can start to really customize the results that you get in Canva. And now, depending on which one I want to use, oh, Patrice has her hand up. Yes, another question actually from two individuals. The yeah. question is, how did you get the blank page? Okay, no problem. And so before you answer that, Antoinette, sorry, because we're breaking in, really quick question to the group, because you may not be seeing my, my private message. However, if you are not, if your name is not on your tile and I cannot check you off, I will have to remove you from the session. Please send me a private message if you do not wish to share it to the group, but please send it, go to the chat, drop down menu, look for Patrice Asper, and please provide me with your name. Otherwise I do have to remove you. Thank you. Continue Antoinette. So how right. do you get the blank page? Blank page, right. So when you're uh, at the beginning of Canva in your home screen, um, I would type in templates to get the size that I'm looking for. So in this case, I put Instagram and right here, it says create a blank Instagram post. And that's how it gives me a blank page from the beginning. All good. All right. I'm going to assume that we're all good. Okay. Uh, yes. So I was starting one. I don't know where we went here. There we go. Okay, so we were looking at some winter photos. Um, if you can have a close look at my screen, as I'm rolling my mouse across some of these photos, some of them say pro with the gold crown. So again, that's a sign that if you have a paid account, that's included, you can use that graphic. If you are using a free account, then um, I think what they typically do unless they've changed it recently, is they allow you to download it and you can pay just for the one image. So you don't have to upgrade your whole account. Um, so usually it's about a dollar, dollar 25 to use the one image and you can continue just 
on your free account. So they give you options. Now, some of them, when you hover your mouse, like this one, it says free. So you can use it whether you're on a paid account or a free account, okay? So if I like this image, I can click on it. Oh, let's find one that I actually like a lot. Uh, this one looks good. And I'm going to use my slider at the bottom to just zoom in so I can see up close what's happening. And for an image, I have a lot of options. I have these handles at the side, left, right, top, and bottom. And if I click and drag towards the middle, it can actually crop. See, it's trimming off the sky, the blue sky, and now you're left with that section. You can drag it back up to bring that back. Okay, so you can trim or crop from either side. And you've got the circles on every corner and that won't trim off, but it will just make the image smaller or make it bigger. And this little tool at the bottom, it's got a circle, double uh, arrow, sorry. You can twist it if for whatever reason you want to have that image on an angle. Maybe you're going to do a bit of a collage and you want to have a few of them, you know, having a different um, angle or arrangement. So this is how you can get an image. Now, if I want to click and drag and fill up the whole square, I can do that. Just click and drag, and there you are. Now, if you decide, hmm, I didn't really want it there, I wanted to capture some more of the tree on the left side, I can double click, and slide it over. Oh, actually, it doesn't let you do it once you fill it out. Let me just press undo. Okay, there we go. So I can stretch it out, and I can click and drag to slide it over. You might lose some of it because this image is horizontal and you've got a square. I'm going to teach you another trick about searching for images. You can click the filter button here and you can say, what kind of images do I want? I want a square instead of horizontal or vertical. And then you apply filter and now your winter images are all square. So if that's really important to you, that's a very easy way to uh, find those types of images right away. Okay. So that's just the basics of images. I see Patrice waving at me again. Hi. Hi. So another question before you move on to that one. Uh, they wanted to know, is, this is from Genevieve, is Canva only for social media or can it also be used for web design? Um, not for web design. You can create graphics that you can post on the website, but you don't create a website with Canva. So you're looking for like WordPress or Wix or um, Squarespace or, you know, or just hire a web designer and <laughs> do it from scratch. So yeah, no, this is just for creating um, images or kind of like, you know, flyers, promotional materials that you would share by email or you would post somewhere else. Okay. So I'm going to give you a scenario here for our next example. Let's say, for example, I own a yoga studio. And in my social media post, I often put up some inspirational, motivational quotes. So I want a really nice dramatic backdrop for this. So I'm going to go into elements. I'm going to type my topic. So I want to pose a yoga pose or an image of a yoga pose and click on photos. And then I get a lot of different options here. Right. Plenty of variety, all looks good. And what I'm gonna to try to find is an image where I have a little bit of white space around the photo because then I'll have some space to type some text. So I'm gonna choose this one here. And here's a little shortcut for you. If you want this image to fit all around in the square, you can set it as a background. The way you do that is you right click and you choose set image as background. And now she's cut off a little bit on the side. I'm gonna double click and slide her over and then just go up to the top and press done. So now she's a little bit more in the frame. And if I decide, well, I, I want her facing the opposite direction. Well, guess what? You can do that too. You can click on the photo. You can go up to the top and press flip and I'm gonna choose flip horizontal. And now she's facing the other way. Okay, so let's add some text to this. We want to do a quote. Of course, we're going to add some text. So here's where you're going to find text. On the left-hand side, you'll click on the text button. There are some cool text options that you have here where you can drop it in and then put in your own text. So that's just sort of if you want to do something kind of fancy. I'm going to delete it. 
Just some basic text would be here, add heading. And you'll see it drops just a basic text box on the page. And I am going to type my own text. So I'm gonna say, do something. Okay, there's a quote for you. Do something today your future self will thank you for. Now this looks a little bit plain. So I'm gonna give you some design tips here. To make it more interesting, what you can do is you can either combine it with other text blocks where it's a different font to make certain words stand out, or you can just make this much bigger or you can use a different font altogether because this font is kind of small. Even if you make it bigger, it's very thin. It kind of gets lost in the backdrop. So I'm gonna recommend something to you. I'm gonna take this word today. I'm gonna to copy, control C, control V, or if you're on a Mac, command C, command V. Copy and paste, do something today. And that word today, I'm gonna to give it a different font to make it stand out. So let's do this. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna choose a different font. And I might even choose a different color. That one too much. Oh, these colors are not blending well for me today. Okay. Do something today your future self will thank you for. Well, I want it to be in a more interesting arrangement. So I'm going to cut these, this text out of here. I'm going to paste them into a separate text box. And now you see it makes a difference here. Do something today your future self will thank you for. So by having different styles of text, it adds more interest. What you can also do is you can also squeeze it down like this. So using the handles on the side and rearrange it a little bit, you can just really, really get very creative about how you organize your text. So I'm doing these on the fly just to kind of give you some examples as we go. But what I've also done is I've also created some examples on another section that I'm just gonna paste in to show you another uh, way of arranging it. Patrice, you have a question? Yes, a couple of questions. One of them is asking, so Susan is asking, if you wanted the background to be a watermark or to make it fainter, how do you do that? Ah, that's an excellent question. I can show you right now. Okay, and, this, and there, so there are two. And the second question, if you want to do them both, is can you change the neon images to say what you want? So you see the one that's on the, yes. Yes, okay. oh, of course. So I'll answer that question for, first, that's easier. So this one, I'm going to, let me just find a clean page here. This one, this neon image, it says, hello, darling. All you have to do is double click. And instead of darling, I can say, hello, friends. Okay, like that. And to get back to the question about making the background fainter, absolutely. All I'll do is click on that image. And there's a button at the top that looks like a checkerboard. It says transparency. When I click on transparency, it says 100. If I slide it back to the left, it gradually fades and fades and fades and fades into the background. And you can do that with any photo or any other graphic. I will be showing you a little bit about that in one of my next examples. But that's a great question. That's, that's the graphic, but what about the words? If you wanted to put like a watermark, so you put your, I guess your website or something, ah, okay. the same to the words? Yeah, you can certainly do that. So let me just, so this word here, if I want to say, da, 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 my website. okay, something like that. First of all, I would make it a different color. And by the way, you're not limited to these colors. You can click the plus sign and you can choose any color across the spectrum. And um, if you have a particular color, if you know the exact hex code for it, the color code, you can just paste it in here. But I would probably choose maybe a pale shade of gray if I wanted it to fade into the background. Um, and that would be a way of making it not stand out as strongly as the other text on the page. So you can do it down here and maybe make it a little bit paler. Does that answer your question? Hopefully, yes. <laughs> Good.
I don't think you can choose hex colors on a free account. Oh, that must be something new. When I used to have my free account, um, they did allow you to do that. I'll have to go and research that a bit because I do have a, a free account that I don't use often. But thanks for the tip on that, Lori. I'll definitely go and check that out a little bit later. Um, Nicole interjected. She sent me, Nicole is still sending me private, mm -hmm. privately, but Nicole says, yes, you can. So I'm assuming she's used it recently. Yeah, as far as I know, you can, but I, I, I will check on it. It's good to know if people are having different experiences. Yeah, I have a free account. And I use the hex codes all the time. Okay, so might be something else going on there. By the way, before the end of the session, I will be providing everyone with my email address. So that way, if you are a little bit stuck on something, you can definitely reach out to me. Okay, it's getting a bit dark in my room. I'm going to turn on my light and then show you the next example. There we go. It's getting dark early now, isn't it? Oh, very much so. So <laughs> while you were doing that, a couple more questions came in. Yeah. Uh, one of them says, if, if you type in your link, does it automatically, like a link, I guess, to a website or, or others, does it automatically make that link, link uh, clickable? And the, the other question, so again, two, four, is what is the cost to use the paid version? So the cost of it I had mentioned in the beginning, which is about $12 US per month, $12 and change. So depending on the current exchange rate, it could get up to $13, $14 maybe, um, but it is well worth it. Trust me. I mean, it's everything all in one. You don't have to go and get a separate membership for photos because we've got photos here. Just amazing tools. So um, yeah, that's, that's the cost that I'm paying at the moment. Um, if you have extra team members, let's say you have a team of two or three people who help you and you want them to have accounts that connect to your account, you will have to pay separately for each user. So it could get expensive if you're in a team environment, but for a single user, it's about $12 US per month. Okay, so as far as your question about making it automatically clickable, it is not unless if you want to make it clickable, that's a great question. Amazing group today, like I'm getting so many advanced questions, which is awesome. Um, you could select the text, right, and then go up here to this button that says link, and then just paste in the website name. You see it underlines it here, which is confirming that now it will be clickable. However, it doesn't always work. If you are going to download this as a PNG file, which is just an image, in my experience, it doesn't work. If you decide to download it as a PDF, it will be clickable. Um, but if, if it's a social media graphic, usually the link to the website is not going to be embedded into the image. It's going to be part of your comment section on that particular post. Yeah, or you can take the whole graphic right? Like say, if you put it on LinkedIn, take the whole graphic and make a hyperlink to it. Um, but yeah, it's not really designed for that as a PNG file. So just be cautious with that. It works better with a PDF type of download. All right. Good, good, good. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up here. Amazing. Do you yeah. have a notification on for something? Because I'm hearing all the tick, 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 and we're recording just bringing it to your oh, attention. Dear. If you're hearing yeah, it, yeah. just to turn off the notifications. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I, hang on one sec. I'm just going to uh, pause my share for a minute okay, and just go you. over and see if I can just knock that out. One second. Yes. It's um. If you go into it, it's on the upper right hand corner, you see the three dots and it'll say just turn off notifications for this chat. Oh, I just shut down where it's coming from. <laughs> I know, I know where it's coming from too. I'm like, oh my goodness. I just shut down the whole window. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Let me start to share again. That should be gone now. Okay. Can you see my screen again? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me get back on track. So let me show you one that I created a little while ago. It was really cool. One second. Oops. So here is one. Let me just undo this. I meant to paste it into this page. This is the image I found a while ago. I was having some trouble finding it today, but I just copied it and pasted it over from a previous example that I had. And I'm gonna show you how I arranged the text. 
All right. So it does take a little time. I will say that most things in Canva are really easy to do, but it takes practice in terms of fitting things just in the spot where you want it. So sometimes if I'm doing a demo, I won't get it exactly perfect on the spot because I don't want you to sit here and watch me lining things up for you know, an hour and a half. But there's an example of how you can use space. So you have an image and you have sort of like a faded out um, section in the back and then you sort of like match up the text all together. Okay, so along the same lines of having an image and quotes, here's another representation of how you can use quotes. So I'm gonna do it differently this time. I'm actually going to show you the finished product and then I'm going to tell you how I created it. Okay, so I created this one where it's a quote, and this is often something that people might do as um, a quote from a happy customer. Oh, this was the best coffee shop I ever went to. I love their coffee, good quality, da, da, da. So here's what I did. I found an image first. I went over to elements. I clicked on the search bar and I typed um, hot chocolate. And then I got some photos of hot chocolate and I just popped one on the background here. And what I also did was I found this really cool graphic that had quote marks. So I went to elements again, I typed quotation. This time I went into graphics and I found this one right here. Right, and what I did was I made it smaller I don't know if I can just grab that. Sometimes it's a little hard to grab because I had other things in the background. I made it smaller. And some of the graphics, if you click on it and then you go up to the top, you'll see that it's giving you a color and then you can change the color. So I made it smaller and I changed it to white. Now, how did I get this circle? I'm gonna show you how. What I did was I went into elements. Almost everything you need will be in elements. You have a section that, that's called lines and shapes. So I'm just clicking here to say, see all. And I could have put the quotes in a square or a hexagon or whatever. I chose a circle. So I clicked on the circle. I made it the right size. And I gave it the color that I wanted. See how that's coming along? And I noticed that the circle was covering the quotes. So what I did was I went and clicked on the circle. I want this position to go backward. So it's back behind the quotes. So I clicked on position, click backward, and now you see it's back behind the quotes. And that's how I made this section right here. I got quotes from the element section. I got a circle from the lines and shapes. And then I just made sure it was either behind or in front of whatever I wanted. And then I just let it sit there, okay? Same thing for this little outline here. I went into elements. I went into lines and shapes. I decided to see all. And I found a shape that was kind of, a, it was a square, but it had rounded edges. I believe it was this one that I found. Yep. And then I used the straight line on the side to stretch it. So it's not a square anymore, but it still has a nice rounded corners. And what I did was I went to the checkerboard for transparency and I just clicked and dragged to make it transparent so you could see through to the coffee cup. So you wouldn't lose that beautiful image that you had in the background, but it still provided a nice background. And then after that, all I did was I went into text, I clicked add heading, I typed coffee and cocoa. I went and clicked add heading again. I typed a perfect combination. And then I just decided to go and find some really nice fonts that I wanted to use, okay? What else did I do here? Oh, I think there's a question in the chat. Uh, question I'll be asking soon. Can you upload a PDF file to later.com or does it have to be a PNG? Um, I haven't used later in a while, but um, last I saw it, it was preferring PNG files. I don't know if PDFs are acceptable on any um, scheduling platforms, Patrice. So my answer would be not PDF, more of a PNG or a JPEG. All right. Uh, okay, so what else did I do to, to set this up? I'm going to teach you a little trick here. So this is a line. It was going straight across the middle. I'm going to show you how I created that line. I went into elements and I could have chosen any of these lines, straight line, dotted line, lines with the circles at the end or whatever. I clicked on it 
and then it dropped onto the page. I decided I wanted it to be white. So I went up to the color block at the top and then I switched it to white. And then I decided maybe I wanted to be thicker. So the next button here is line weight. As you drag across to the right, the line gets thicker. As you drag across to the left, it gets thinner. A good rule of thumb is maybe anywhere between two to four points look nice and elegant. You don't want it to be too overpowering. And then you might see here there are circles on the ends. I just click and drag to the middle and I can make it any size I want. So I put it right there to the corner and that's how I got that nice split across the middle. And now finally, what else did I do? I got these nice little graphics here. So if you wanted to add a little bit more texture, this is really just for adding texture to the background of that graphic. Um, you can actually just add line drawings that are along the same theme. So I have a bag of coffee beans and coffee beans here and then cocoa. So again, elements. I did a search for um, cocoa beans. Press enter. Going into the graphics section. And then I was able to find some nice line drawings that I could just click and put anywhere I like. I can twist them around on an angle. I can make them smaller. And guess what? In this case, I can actually change the color. And I decided to make it white so it kind of just fades into the background and it doesn't interfere with any of the other elements, right? Another thing I wanna show you about elements is that whenever you choose a picture or a drawing or a shape, there's a section at the top that says recently used. And if you click see all, it will allow you to go and backtrack and check out stuff that you used not too long ago. So you can just go and grab it again instead of doing a full search for it. Um, it just brings you back to where you were. So if I like this one, I can just click on it, brings it back and I can just drop it here at any time. All right, so there's texture. Patrice, questions, more questions. Well, Nicole uh, mentions that she doesn't seem to have the graphics option on her free account. So is that something that's only in the pro or the no, paid it's version? always been in free, okay. always. Mm -hmm. Photos and graphics. You may not have videos, um, maybe not audio, but photos and graphics, uh, graphics are always there. Okay, so again, yeah. it's under elements and then you have to slide over just to see. So maybe it's hidden. I, maybe it might be sometimes what happens is some menus don't appear because maybe your window size is not wide enough you see that so for example if I have some text options look at all the options I have including the one that's got the checkerboard and the hyperlink if I make my window smaller you notice half of those buttons disappear and then there's a dot 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 if I click here it shows them so your window might be too small and that's why some things are hiding away so just stretch it out a little bit and see if some things come into sight for you. Excellent, thank you. And okay. Farah's question, just pointing out to everybody that some of your messages are coming to me directly. So I'm just letting you know, how did you change the color of the graphics? So the oh, question the, is, how did the, you change uh, the color of the graphics? Like the box here? I'm assuming, yes. Or the, the line drawings. Either one is the same way. What you will have to do is to click on the object and then across the top menu here where it's white, all the way to the left, it'll show you the color that it is right now. Oh, the line drawings, it's the same. So I'm clicking on the line drawing and then all the way to the left, it might show a rainbow color here, depending on the type of the drawing. Maybe it's got two tones in it or something. You can click on that and then pick from anything here or use the plus sign to determine your own color. That's pretty nice brown, actually. I love that one. Okay, good, good, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna kick it up a notch here. We're gonna go to the next example. And what I want to show you is how you can add more layers and just finishing touches and even add a logo to your uh, graphic to represent what you need on that, um, that social media post. So I will give you another scenario here. So let's say that I, I have a dentist's office and I'm opening this office and I wanna welcome everybody to an open house. So I'm gonna do a social media post to tell everybody when it's gonna happen. Here's a picture of my office. Here's my logo. It's all gonna be really nicely branded for me. So 
Again, I, I really love using photos. Some people, some designers like using, you know, graphics, like drawings, like this type of thing for their social media posts. I'm a big fan of photos. That's just me. Um, but for this example, again, I'll use a photo. So let's see if I'm lucky enough to find this. I'm going to look for a picture of a couch. Maybe it's a waiting room couch. And I'm going to click on photos. Now, when you type couch, you get a lot of different couches here. Luckily for me, these are all modern couches. But again, if you want to specify what type of couch, your search bar here. So you can do, um, if you want to do vintage, vintage couch, you'll get slightly different results. Okay. Or if you want to do modern couch, again, the results will be a little bit different there. Okay. So I'm going to go back to couch. Let's see if I can find the one I like to use. Otherwise, I'm going to have to cheat a little bit and copy and paste it over from another example, which I really, really loved and I wanted to use because it had a nice plant on the side. Okay, can't find it at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste one that I really loved because this is going to give you a great example. So I went and I found this image of a couch. And I love it because it's got a nice empty space at the top. This is where I'm gonna put my writing, open house, you know, December 12th, whatever, everyone's welcome. So this is a nice background because I've got a lot of empty space. Now, what I'm gonna do is add some text. So I'm going to say, new patients welcome. And if I wanna have the same font for a different text box, what I can do is just press Control D or Command D. Here's a shortcut you might not know. D stands for duplicate. So instead of copy and paste, you can do duplicate and it will do the same thing, same font. And here I'll put the date. So this is going to be December. I'm gonna change this button here. If you ever run into this problem where you're typing and it's coming out in uppercase, but you know that's not what's up on your keyboard, this button here, the uppercase, lowercase, that might be what's keeping you stuck. So I'm going to say December, that's better. 12, 2021. Okay. And I'm going to change the color. And I'm also going to make it smaller. All right. Maybe not that small, maybe 48. Okay. So now I've got two text boxes. I'm going to teach you another shortcut. If you've got your pen and paper, grab this one. Instead of copying a piece of text or going over here to the text box and the menu, I can just click on the page, type the letter T for text, and that will always give me a new text box that I can just type in, right? So I'm going to type here, open house. I can bring it up here, and we can make that one much bigger. And again, we can just go and choose a different type of font. Okay, and again, a different color. So this is where the layering starts because layering doesn't necessarily mean that things are overlapping. It means that you're adding different styles on one page. So it's more interesting having two different fonts instead of the same font all the way through, or some of the um, text will be uppercase and some will be lowercase, right? So just not being afraid to sort of mix and match a good standard for any flyers or notifications though is the fonts, you should never have more than two fonts. Um, I know everyone's like, oh, well, it's art and you're free to do whatever you want, whatever, which is true. <laughs> but if you wanna make it easier for people to read and not have them struggle as they're looking on their tiny little phone in the middle of the night, you wanna make sure it's easy to read. And I would keep it just to two fonts or, or you know, one font even, but two is more interesting. So this is where we begin our layering. All right. Now, what else can we do to layer this up and make it look really cool? Well, I like those posts where it looks like it's kind of framed up. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to create a frame just to add that finishing touch. And then we're going to add a logo. I'm going to show you how to add your own logo. On the left side, I'm going to click elements and go into lines and shapes, see all. And I have a few elements here that are outlines already. So this isn't a full circle. This is a circle outline. And this isn't a full square. It's an outline of a square. So I will click on that. And as you might be able to see, it's blue. 
and I'm gonna change it to a darker shade of, actually, no, I think white looks better. Change it to white. Now look closely, oops, sorry about that. You see, it's a pretty thick outline. And if I were to use this as my outline, it just looks a little bit heavy. I think it's too chunky for this face. So I want that outline to be thin. I'm gonna teach you an amazing shortcut that was pretty hard to figure out on your own. So I'm gonna show you how. Now notice how thick this is right now, right? Watch as I start making it smaller. I'm gonna use the circles on the corner, not the side handles, the corner, the circles. Click and drag towards the middle. I'm making it smaller, but don't worry. As I drag towards the middle, what starts happening? Do you notice the frame, the line gets pretty thin? Did you notice that? The line is getting much thinner. And when you get it to the level of thin or thinness that you like, then don't grab the corners again because it's gonna get thick again. Keep it to the level of thinness, go to the side, stretch it out, it will remain thin. Go to the bottom, stretch it out, it stays thin. So now it looks more slick because it's not so heavy. So all you had to do was use the corners to make it the right thickness and use the sidebars to stretch it out, to outline it in the position that you want. Pretty cool, right? I'm not gonna charge you extra for that. <laughs> okay, so now it's starting to layer up nicely. I love this plant here. It layers nicely over the plant, layers nicely over the wall and the sofa. And all we need now is a little bit of branding on it. So here's how you add a logo. Your logo, of course, is not going to be in Elements because Canva doesn't know your logo. But how can you set it up so that Canva always has your logo available for you in any project? And it's going to stay there and you won't lose it and you can use it for future projects. Here you go on to the left side and you click this button that says Uploads. Now I'm going to show you a couple different things that you can do. If you wanted to upload media, you can click on upload media and then go to wherever you have this saved. So let's say I'm gonna upload my picture, click open and then it uploads it into Canva and it stays there, I don't lose it. Same thing for your logo, click upload media, go and find where you have your logo saved on your computer and then click open and then it will bring it in and save it there for you all the time, all right? So if you wanted a picture of yourself, if that was a part of your graphic, you can just pop it in. Let's find a picture. I'm going to use this guy. Very handsome guy. This is my husband, by the way. So let's pretend he's a dentist. Let's pretend he's got lots of money, first of all, <laughs> which he does not. But let's pretend he's a rich, handsome dentist, and he wants to put his picture right there on this particular social media post. So all I had done was I went to upload media. I grabbed his picture from my laptop, and then I just popped it in here. And you can do the same. Okay, I'm gonna just delete for now. And the same goes for logo. So I'm gonna use my logo. Actually, you know what? I don't like that one. I'm gonna use this one instead. Uh, Burrell Creative. I don't have a dental logo that I can use at the moment, but let's just pretend that's what it is. And now you just have it at the corner. I recommend for every single social media post that you use, you put your company logo. It's brand recognition and it's through repetition. People are always gonna recognize you. Even if they don't recognize, you know, they can't see what you're saying at the moment, subconsciously as they're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or wherever, they're gonna see it and it'll be in the back of their mind. Just like, you know, the McDonald's logo, you know, the Taco Bell logo, you know, the, you know, what other logo, you know, the uh, Toronto Raptors or TD Bank or whatever, right? It's just on a subconscious level that creates recognition and people will start to be familiar with you. Any questions on uploading your photos or your logos? Remax Balloon, exactly. How can we do voiceover on the images? Um, what you can do, oh, there's a record yourself. I've never used that. Let's experiment. I don't want to do that. I don't, I just want to use mic. No microphone built in. Let's experiment here. Okay, this is a test. I'm gonna save and exit. I never use that, just so you know. Record. Three, two, one. Okay, this is a recording. Let's try it. Let's check it out. Let's experiment. This is fun. Okay. We're done. Save and exit.
I literally have no idea what I just did because I never use that. What I always do is I record it in another app. Okay, this is a recording. Oh, let's try it. Let's check it out. Let's experiment. This is fun. Did you see it? it? Brought it up. So I've never used it before, but I thought I would take a chance because Canva is so easy to use. Most of the stuff that you don't know, you can practice, you can play with it, test it out and see what happens. Now this will go in here. Um, let's put this onto a separate page because I want to see how that's going to work when we download it, what's going to happen differently. So let's put that on hold for now. I know that uh, one person asked a question about that. Let's put a pin in that. I don't want to get sidetracked too far, but I will come back to that because when you download it, it will be a different format. It's not going to be a PNG. It's going to be MP4. Uh, Patrice, there was another question. Yes, I don't know if you actually responded to it. I apologize because I was distracted over something else. But one of the questions was about future search of uploaded images. Can we rename them? Rename any uploaded images? For future um, search. I guess if you upload, can you rename it so you come back to it? That is a great question. I don't know. I, you know what? I never bothered to name these. <laughs> I love well, the questions. That's what I love about engaged uh, <laughs> audiences. <laughs> I never bothered to name them. I never really saw a need to name them. So you're saying you wanted to name them. Oh, if you have a lot and you want to do a search. So um, maybe if you're doing your own private collection, you could have, for example, um, people or things. I guess you could rename different folders. But you, you can name folders, but I think the question was about naming the image, image, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see a place here where I can name them. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, whoever has the question, I'm going to do this now. I wasn't going to do it till later. But right now, before we get close, well, we've got plenty of time. I'm going to put my email address in the chat. And if you can just grab that email address and save it off to the side, please uh, send me an email after the session and maybe that's something we can go into in more detail. So one second. Okay. Okay, super. So that was that question about the images. And then of course you just did the voiceover, which is so cool. The next mm -hmm. question is, should we try to keep logo in the same spot on the creation? Or can we move it in other areas depending on our creation? So what's the sort of rule of thumb or best practice around that? Um, usually it's going to be at the bottom in the corner, whether that's left or right. My personal opinion is to keep it in the same place all the time. Okay. Yeah. Now, there might be situations where because of the nature of the image, it won't work out. So let's say I have like using this image, right? Oh, I don't know why that one's not loading up. It's a white background. Okay, let's say I use this image, but on the floor it was gray, so it wouldn't show up, but over here the floor was white, so maybe I would switch it up for that situation. Okay. So I it doesn't have to be in the same place all the time, um, but I would recommend it should at least be at the bottom. Okay, just because there's a lot going through the conversation, I'm going to quickly come to this one mm. as well. Do you have to save each individual post separately? Is that the whole question or is there more? There is more um, explanation. I found when I've tried to do multiple posts in the same file, I would end up posting them all versus just the one I want to post that day. So I suppose it has to do with publishing as well as the post itself. Yeah, we are coming to that. If you can just hang on with that question, because I am going to show you multiple ways of downloading and multiple formats for downloading. Okay, and then the other question is, so one of, is there only one person on a post? I'm not sure what that means, or maybe Genevieve, you could elaborate on that question. And the other one is, how would you find the uploaded image? I guess once after you've, you've uploaded it's, an image, how do you find it afterwards? It's always here in this uploads uh, menu on the side. They will just appear. Okay, and the other part is, your own image with different facial expression. I'm not sure what that means. Um, Teresa mentioned that you can rename them by going to uploads folder and clicking on the pen and then changing the name. So if nobody else saw that in the chat, apparently there's a pen and- It's not, you know what? Interesting, Teresa. I 
don't see the pen show up on mine i don't see the pen yeah unless it goes uh, the one below can you go to the ones that are, were there in the past some older ones okay yeah. if i no unless i can no it doesn't allow me that's interesting mm -hmm. that is interesting i don't see the pen i was looking for one because that's the universal edits button right um but i do not see it hmm She's mentioning from the folder on the left. Go to folder folders. In uploads, you see a pen. Folders. Is there an, a one that says folders? There is one that says folders. Yes. And then I guess there are all the names here. These aren't for the uploads though. These are just for the folder names themselves. Is there one that's for uploads, a folder for uploads? If there is, I think I'm missing it. I don't see one for uploads in this section. It appears to be over here. Okay. Hmm, that is tricky. Okay, so maybe that's what it is. It's how you set it up. So you could create a folder for uploads and within that folder, you can rename your individual images. That's, that's yeah. what I'm taking away from that part of it. It's possible. Yeah, I don't want to say no, because it is possible. And, and um, Canva is great about giving new upgrades, all the updates all the time. So it may be something that has recently been made available and I wasn't aware of. Um, but yeah, definitely something worth looking into. Okay, <laughs> super. And the and so going back to regarding the post, it, you will refer, you will come back to that, or it's coming up regarding how you post yes, and yes. publish. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Okay. Thank um, you. One more thing. I want to do one more thing with you, and that is how to use animations. Okay. So I'm going to scroll past this one. I'm going to add another page. I'm going to show you how to do animations. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time just focusing on the downloading procedures. OK, so I'm going to grab an image that I saw the other day that I really got a kick out of. OK, so let's say it's a birthday sale. I own a bakery. I'm having a birthday sale for my bakery. And here's my graphic. And I want to punch it up a little bit. Maybe I want to put this on Instagram story. First of all, if it's going to be Instagram story, this is the wrong size because that is a more of a vertical setup. But just to keep things simple, I'll show you on this page. If I want something to sparkle, I'm going to go back to elements. I'm actually going to type sparkle. And instead of a photo or graphics, I can actually, well, graphics here, you have some sparkly images. There are also videos that play. What I can do to get all animations instead of some moving and some still is go back into filters, right? And then you can choose what kind of images do you want? I want animated and apply filters. And it still just gives me a whole bunch of things that are not animated, but you'll get more results of animations. So I want to really have a festive kind of feeling here. So I've got this animation. I can make it smaller just to make it more subtle in the background. And there was a really cool one that I loved the other day. Just this one kind of looks like fireworks. Lots going on here. Okay. Let's get rid of this one. I'm just going to double up command D to duplicate. And here we go. So really exciting stuff all over the place. So this is an example of an animation and this is just going to loop. So when we download, we can choose to download this as an MP3 video file and that will allow us to have that as a moving graphic on our stories or wherever we want to put this, right? Okay, or you can even put it on your website, whatever you like. So um, there's a bunch of other stuff I can show you, but I, I feel like we're going to have a lot of questions. So I just want to get right into the downloading section of this webinar. Now, if I want to see where everything stands so far, the entire layout, looking at a glance, I'm going to go here and click the button at the bottom that says grid view. And that shows a nice layout of all the different pages that I've created. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different ways that you can actually 
work with these images, whether you want to download them separately as different files, as PDFs for whatever reason, it's not really on topic here. You wouldn't use this as a PDF for uh, social media, but I want to show you all the different options you have for any project in Canva. Now, if you'll just give me a moment here, I'm going to just make some adjustments here to my sorry, to my download folder to make sure I'm gonna be in the right place. Okay. All righty, here we go. Close that for now. So when I'm ready to download, I have choices. I can download just one of these images and then just post it directly on my social media platform or schedule it with Hootsuite or later or uh, what else do we have? Meet Edgar or whatever you're using, right? Or I can download many of them. And this is what I recommend. Plan out your social media posts. Create several all at once. Sit down, just take a couple hours, create a whole bunch of them and then download them all at once. And then you can just pop them into the different dates when you open Hootsuite or whatever you use to schedule. So the first way is the simplest way. I'm gonna show you how to download just one graphic. Let's say I only want to download uh, graphic number two. I'm gonna click the download button at the top. And by the way, I wanna remind you again, if your window is kind of small, sometimes you might lose that button. So always stretch it out, make sure you've got enough room to see your menus, click download. And instead of a video, I'm going to just say I want a PNG. This is a high quality image. And select pages, I'm going to say I want to select only page number two. I'll click done and download. And that will download it into the download folder of my computer. Then I can go and pick it up. Here it is, downloads. And I can see it right here, Antoinette's new December post. I can then open it up, check it out, or I can just drag and drop it over to my software that I use for posting to social media. Okay, so that's a simple way of downloading one image. Now, if I wanted to download everything except five and six, I can click download. Again, I want them all as PNG files because they're going to be pictures that I share on social media. And I can just go click through. I want one, two, three, four. I don't want five and six. Or I could do them all. I can click this button and download them all. But for now, I'm just going to do one, two, three, and four. Press done and download. Now, it's going to look a little bit differently this time. This time when the download comes through, on my file manager, it's going to show me a zip folder because these files can tend to be large and having it downloaded into a zip folder just makes it faster to transfer over to you. So you just have to be aware of that, that it is gonna come in looking like this. All you need to do is to double click and then it will extract them into a regular folder, a yellow folder or a blue folder. And then you see they are separate files that you can drag and drop over to your social media scheduling tool. Okay. I'm going to show you another way, and then we'll talk about um, this graphic here where we have the, uh, the MP4, the movie file. If we can imagine that this isn't social media, this is something that's going to be, actually, I'll show you a different example. I'm going to bring you into another example. Usually I don't do this, but I think this is something that people will want to know about. If I had like an ebook, for example, one second here. I've got two screens running, so I've got to be careful here. Okay, here's another example. Okay, let's say, for example, I have this is a, some type of an ebook or a training manual or workbook or something. This is intended for PDF documentation. This is not something I would put on social media, but just so that you are aware, because I think this is really a more of an advanced group and I'm getting a lot of advanced questions. So you might want to know if you click the download button and you choose PDF, I would use PDF print because you get a better image quality. And you say you want all of these pages. It's going to give you one document. Okay, not five different documents with five different PDFs. It's gonna give me one PDF 
with five pages. <clears throat> and this is what it's going to look like on the other side. I'll just bring it up in my downloads folder so you can see. And with the PDF, one thing I also want to mention with that is that if you had created a hyperlink, PDFs allow hyperlinks to be clickable and live. So this is what I had mentioned earlier. And here we go. Uh, where am I? Where am I? PDF, you see, is just one file instead of multiples like this one. So when I double click on it, I will show you, I'll just drag over my other screen so you can see. <clears throat> it's going to produce this type of image. Okay, you see it is a PDF page one of five. So it's five pages, one document, five pages as a PDF. So think of a workbook or a report or something like that. Okay, a company info package, all that kind of stuff. All right, so I don't wanna to get too far off topic. So I'm gonna drag that back over here and then we'll look at these files. How are we doing for questions? I've just put a few in the, in sent to you. The mm -hmm. questions that I see here is how did you get all the graphics ready for download? I believe you'd mm -hmm. gone through that earlier. So I'm not sure if this person had come in after. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, once you doing this on Canva, we should use a scheduling platform. Is that what you're saying? And then what, which ones do you recommend or which mm -hmm. software? And lastly, mm -hmm. does the Canva have a content content planner available for pro account? Yes. So I'll answer the first question, which is um, which platform, which scheduling platforms do I recommend? Um, I've only had a lot of experience with two of them. There are many out there. I've used Hootsuite, which is amazing. And I've also used Later, which is, I think, even easier to use. Those are the two that I would recommend. And I think they have like, you can get like a 14 day free trial just to see if you like it. So I would try those out first. Um, you also do have a scheduling tool within Canva. Um, I've used it a few times, but um, I don't think it's, a, it's not available on the free version of Canva. So you would click here on the ellipsis button, and then you can use the scheduling tool right here. And when you choose that, you can, first of all, it might prompt you to connect it to your social media accounts. So you'll have to put in your login details to um, connect and give permission for Canva to pull these graphics. And you will also have to write the captions too. So yes, you can use the scheduler within Canva. Do I recommend it? Not really, um, because it doesn't give you as much analytical data as you would get, say, in Hootsuite. Um, it sometimes doesn't connect very well with certain apps. Like uh, I know it doesn't connect very well with LinkedIn all the time. It is limited because I think it's something that's kind of like in the baby stages of development. So it's worth a try, but again, it's, it's really up to you. You can, you can test it out and see if you like it, but it doesn't have all the features that you would get in, in Hootsuite or later, or, you know, HubSpot or whatever you use, or Zoho is another one. Yeah. Um, what are the two names again? It's Later and Hootsuite. I'll just type them in here for you. Uh, so Later. And actually, I'll just put them in the chat there. Oops, I think I just put it to Patrice. Sorry, Patrice. <laughs> Everyone wants to type private messages to Patrice. Sorry. Um, okay. The two names. How different is Canva from Adobe Spark, Photoshop, Illustrator softwares, making these flyers and posts? Okay. So hmm, Canva is like an all-in-one solution. So it's not the same as say, first of all, the price, right? Photoshop or the Adobe suite is very expensive. Um, and it does require a lot more training. That's more for people who are seasoned and well-trained graphic designers. So the tools are not as easy to use. Even people who I know who are graphic designers, they say it can be overwhelming. Um, and it requires a lot more detail than you might need here. Just like grab a photo, drop it in, put some text on it and done. So it's it's a lot more advanced. It does cost more money. It requires a lot more training and, and a high, much higher skill level than Canva. 
Um, and I don't know how well collaboration works with other team members. Again, that might be an additional cost. Um, so, I mean, I get everything I need from my clients right here in Canva. Um, and the, the other big difference is, for example, if you, if you use a service like uh, Shutterstock or iStock Photo, which are great, their graphics are amazing, um, but you do tend to have to pay for individual images, which are quite expensive. But with Canva, you get a huge database and they're all included in the price. So yeah, that would be my, my take on it. And they're not really designed for, it's not as easy. I think Canva works well with social media posts where the other ones, you have to go into so much fine detail to get the right size. It's, it's different. It's not worse or better. It's just, it requires a lot more training. Oh, we've got two more messages. Okay, later has a free option. Yes, it does. I thought Photoshop has a one-time fee of 150 for the software. Ah, uh, no, maybe many years ago. It's crazy expensive now. Uh, is there a limit as to how often you can use the images in your social media? No, it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, I wouldn't repeat them too often, but you can reuse images from Canva over and over. They don't block you at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, great questions. Wow. All right. So I promised you we were going to look at this one. So let's look at the birthday sale. Let's see how that works when we download it. So when we download this time, I'm going to download it as an MP4. So it will be a moving image file that we can upload and actually have the graphics showing through instead of just a still image. So if I click on download, I'm going to choose this file format, MP4 video. And in this case, I'm just going to unclick all the others and choose only page six, done and download. So this will take a little bit. Oh, well, someone said, do you, you don't suggest repeating? Not really. <laughs> you want to keep it fresh. Unless it's, it's an ad for an event or maybe an online course. And the repetition lets the person know that it's the same course. You're just promoting the same thing again. And maybe you can do that two or three times in the space of a, you know, a month or six weeks. But I'll try to use new ones every time. Okay, if we don't repeat as a small business owner, they will be spending so much time making these flyers. Yes, it is time consuming. <laughs> that is the truth. You do, you do need to take the time to do it, or you could set up a basic layout and then just change the words. That, that could be a suggestion for you. MP4, when do we, the picture with a video of in it, I don't understand the question for... When I think we, I think he, they're referring to the one that you were experimenting with earlier. Let's try that one. Let's try this one first, and then we'll try the other one. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so my new December pose, magical cupcakes. Okay, and this is it. This is what it looks like. Pretty cute. So what I will do is when I'm ready to post this, I have it here in my downloads folder. This is the file, and I will just drag this into my social me media scheduler as a moving image. Make sense? Yeah. Oh my goodness, time is going so fast. Okay, we've got 10 minutes. I'm gonna show you one more thing, and then we can have some more questions and kind of wrap up. So this one, as you know, and I'm very transparent about it, I've never tried this before. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out. Let's see what happens. So this is the one I recorded on the spot. I think the result is gonna be the same as this. We're gonna download it as an MP4. And the only difference is it will have um, sound with it, should have sound. So I'm just going to use page five. Let's download and let's see what happens. Okay, now going into my folder, here we go. Let's see, let's bring it over. Okay, this is a recording. Let's try it, let's check it out, let's experiment. This is fun, okay. So yeah, the result was the same. Okay, this is a recording. Yeah, and then she won't stop talking. Okay, <laughs> so the result was the same. 
it's a video and it's got audio because I was speaking through it. So it looks like it works pretty well. I learned something new today. So that's always exciting. Uh, but we don't want the video, just the audio. Okay, so we didn't have time to try both options. That's why I tried both at the same time. But if you wanted to try it, you would go in here, upload, record yourself. And I believe what we would do is this one, the audio. And as I mentioned before, I've never tried this before. So I would need some time to go and figure out one or the other. The other way is if you record audio on your computer and you save the audio file separately, that part I do know. You'd have to go into upload media and find the audio file here on your computer, right? Then it will be in here in the audio section, right? Save so time. that could be something that you were just playing with a little bit. All right. Good, good. I like seeing the finished design first. This really sparks my imagination. Question, do you have a portfolio of designs you can share so later we can replicate for our practice? Um, I can direct you to my design gallery on my website. I'll just put this link in the chat and that way you'll be able to see a few examples. But if you want more, you can definitely email me. So. There is a link to one of the pages in my website. It's just a design gallery with some fun stuff if you want to just do some practice rounds. And these are the types of documents that I create for clients. So yeah, that'll give you something to, to sort of play with a little bit. Okay, we are at 4.53. Wow, that was a full session. That was a full session. So Patrice, I don't know if you have any, um, any things that you have to cover before we wrap up, or can we just grab a few more questions before we end? The biggest one for me is just to say thank you again to everybody who registered and who attended. Really, again, what is Do It in Durham? Do It in Durham is a celebration of global entrepreneurship. It's our way of celebrating you, you as business owners and entrepreneurs that make up this incredible community. And we want to say a special thank you again to the sponsors of this amazing event, to the collaborative partners, because without all that support, it's really, really hard to pull something like this off. I mean, it's our second year doing it virtually. We're hoping going forward that come next year, we can certainly meet some of you, oh, most of you, all of you in person, because we're hoping going forward by this time next year, we will be creating some sort of a hybrid, especially for the networking portion. So thank you again, Antoinette, for your amazing time, wealth of, of knowledge that you shared with us today. I know it, it's hard sometimes to get to all the questions and in, in such a way, and it's hard when it's designed this way. But I think from, from it, at the very least, we can all walk away going, wow, we learned something new about Canva, including Antoinette. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, that's great. You guys yeah, got me this one. I would like to wrap it up, but you're welcome if you have any final words. So just again, a special thank you to you, Antoinette, for all this, all that you shared with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. That was loads of fun. I love when I get a ton of questions. It challenges me. It stretches my mind and my knowledge as well. So I appreciate all the tough questions in there. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned before, and I'll put my email address again for those who didn't catch it the first time, Burrell at BurrellCreative.ca. Um, and yes, I do offer complimentary consultations. If you'd like to embark on a project to you know, create some documents or marketing materials, for your company, I'd be glad to have a 20 minute discovery call with you and, and just answer any of your um, existing questions. So with that, I bid you good night. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for being a guest in this presentation. If you would like to book an appointment with us here at the Business Advisory Center Durham, just follow the information right on the closing slide and we look forward to seeing you.